All right, now continuing on with our discussion of the Mandelbulb 3D Animation Maker. We, uh, in the last session, we just finished uh, talking about the output format, and I was mentioning that I always use PNG because it is compressed a smaller file than bitmap and lossless. All right, let's move forward here. Now let's go down here. I'm gonna talk about this preview here in a little while, maybe the next session. We'll see how it goes. Overwrite existing images. Now, uh, you gotta be really careful with this little bugger. When you do network rendering, uh, which I will explain to you, you do not want this turned on. So put it in your head right now that typically you're going to want to, well, I, I shouldn't say typically. If you use multiple computers to do your rendering, turn that off. All right. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't really matter. Me personally, first thing I do is I bop that off. Uh, and of course, up here, since it defaults to bitmap, I, I set this to PNG. Um, and so I'm always kind of undoing these defaults in those two particular situations. We'll talk about the overwriting existing images at another time uh, when we get to rendering. Loop animation uh, really just says, uh, you know, just uh, repeat these, uh, these two keyframes over and over and over and over and over again until you tell it not to. You put it, you stop it. I never use it. Uh, if I want to loop anything, I'll create the animation between the keyframes or keyframes, and I'll loop it all in my video editor. I never loop it here. Save uh, Z buffer two. Uh, uh, the Z buffer is a it's a file. It's a separate file, and the, the file will sit right next to your your PNG. All right, uh, and it'll be labeled Z buffer or Z buff. Um, and that is often used in software applications uh, to uh, help the, the, the other application, not Mandelbulb 3D, help the other application be more precise on depth. All right, so it's, it's a Z buffer, Z. All right, so it's helpful in if you're going to be um, processing your animation in, an, in a third-party software, which you are, and you want that software to have a tool, a file, which will help that software uh, be more precise and control depth or a simulation of depth. That's a, that's a topic for another time. All right, render stereo animation. Um, uh, uh, I had mentioned sessions ago that the Mandelbulb 3D software can actually output and create uh, stereo images. So it can create a left eye and a right eye. Um, and it's the stereoglyphic kind. It's the, uh, the cyan and the, the blue type. It's not the type of goggles that you... You, you go use uh, an, uh, at a 3D movie in the theaters, all right? It's a, uh, it's a stereoglyphic. It's the uh, cyan and the blue uh, type of uh, stereo. At some point in the future, uh, we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll actually do a project um, using the stereo. Uh, now, I've done a couple, uh, and they're pretty cool. It's, it's, wow, you know, it's pretty good. So the Mandelbal 3D software does have the ability to create uh, stereo or stereoglyphic um, uh, uh, animations as well as stills. All right, uh, and then of course, if you uh, if you pop that on, then this becomes available. You have kind of another option uh, where you can render just one side. Okay, but that's stereo stuff. All right, now. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's uh, all right. Let's talk about the preview here in this session. Now, all right. The preview is going to give you a uh, a, a small 
uh, reduced resolution um, preview of your of your animation. Let's uh, let's punch it and I'll show you. Uh, so I got two keyframes here, and I've only got 50 frames in between. As a matter of fact, let's just knock that down. Let's just say, uh, well, let's just say 20 keyframes, just so that I can show you this preview without you sitting here waiting on it. All right. So what this basically, uh, so this is a total of 40 frames, subframes that are going to be uh, rendered. All right. Now I'm saying here to my keyframe, my keyframe start and stop. Uh, start at the first keyframe and end at the last keyframe. If I have a, a hundred keyframes up there, I could type in a hundred stop at the last or stop at the hundredth, or I could say stop at uh, keyframe uh, 35. All right. And so last in there works just fine. And here it's saying render every nth frame. When you're previewing, you don't really need every single subframe to be shown to you. You can get a very good sense as to your motion with fewer frames than every single frame. Uh, but I could put that up to uh, whatever, I don't know what the maximum number is. Oh, 10. Okay. Or I could put that down to 1. Show me every single subframe in the preview or show me every other frame, or show me every third frame, you get the picture. Now, the default is two. Downscaling, uh, if uh, it will actually, let's say if I downscale it by one, it will take, it will try to give me a preview of this resolution right here times my anti-aliasing. So two would double this value the width and double the height. All right, that's with a downscaling of one, which is effectively no downscaling. All right, and then it would say the memory that is needed, it would be 20 megabits bytes. And the time is gonna be two minutes and 18 seconds to render out my preview at this full resolution. Now I can say that you typically will never do that. You can. It doesn't make any sense. You, you might as well just render the whole thing out and look at it in your video editor if you're going to just do a down, if you're going to do no downscaling, which is one. Typically, you're not going to do that. It's nice that you have the option, though. Ah, I'm going to downscale it uh, by three. And you notice here, two megabytes, it's going to take, uh, what, 14 seconds to render? That's much better. I'm only doing a preview. Let's do the preview. Punch it. Let's get it over here where you can see it. All right. Uh, so what I have here now is I got a preview. It's only 40 frames. Now, 40 frames at 30 frames per second is going to be what? Uh, a one second, one and two tenths seconds, something like that. So that's my animation over one second. That's 40 subframes between two keyframes. But I only did this so we didn't have to sit here and, and look at this thing forever uh, as it cranked out the preview. Now, if I, if I uncheck this frames per second, boom, like that, it gives me the ability to walk through the frames. Now, keep in mind, that I asked it to render every second frame. So I'm walking th through, uh, I'm, I'm stepping two subframes at a time. But it's enough to give me a sense for how the movement in my scene was keyframed. It's enough. And that's all you want with this preview. You're not, you don't care about the quality, you don't care about the coloring, you don't care about the lighting. What you're doing here is you're checking your movement, your animation through the scene. That's all you're doing. All right. All right, so uh, uh, tell you what, let's end this session here.
and when we come back I'm going to show you a little bit more about this preview and then we'll get we'll get back into our animation maker window okay I'll see you in the next uh, next session